Hey everyone. Okay, so I suppose the first thing to mention in with this chapter is the last couple pages where you see the Straw Hats cornered by Jay Garcia and, and, and Nostro. All the while, thanks to York, Mars finds the transmission snail and about to destroy it. And yeah, there's a lot to unpack just within this one section. First and foremost, the transponder snail. Let's just kind of admit what we're all thinking about that one, probably. It's a red herring. Like, the thing... Like, the, the, the whole thing... The whole thing with that those last couple panels of, of Mars just kind of looking at, at, the, at, the, at the transponder snail, it just screams, It's a trap! Like I, I felt like I, I felt like I felt like a living embodiment of the Star Wars meme in that moment of like, yeah, it's a fuck. Like the whole thing is a fucking trap. There's no way Vegapunk would just leave something that important so out in the open unless he rigged it in some way. Where no matter what the five Elder Stars do, his message st will still get broadcast. Either, either that or he trick tricked them with the timer thing and it's it's about to broadcast regardless right now but either either way it's one of those things where th there, there's no scenario i see here where the five elders aren't caught with their pants down but but constant caught with their pants down like mars like j even just looking at mars's face in in those last couple panels you can tell he's caught on to something and it's just a matter of what that something is like it it, it just feels too easy a victory for them and with Stussy, and the thing is as well, with Stussy talking about staying behind to complete the final job, as it were, I wonder if she's if she's ultimately doing going to do something to kind of blow the lid wide open on her, on everything with the government, even if the transponder snail gets destroyed. Like that, 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 that is of course, assuming Kaku doesn't find some way to to escape his little imprisonment and stop her. But it's like I I think like all these pieces are set up in a way where. Regardless of what the, regardless of what the uh, the five elders lose this lose this war, honestly, like it's it's just all it's just all set up in a way where it's like yeah, something's something's gonna happen. Some something Vegapunk planned for everything with this situation. Um, with all that being said, one of the more interesting characters to follow with this chapter was definitely York, because right. Because through a lot of her exchanges with Mars during this chapter, you almost get the sense she's she's the purest distillation of Vegapunk's desire to be left alone, to conduct scientific explorations and experiments in peace, even to the point of making deals with the government to secure what she what she wants. The the only real difference is between York and Vegapunk is that unlike Vegapunk, who, who chose the path of peace. York is choosing to resort to more violent and radical methods to get what she wants. Like, she... It's almost like, she, again, I could be giving her too much credit, and she, maybe she is still going... Maybe if given the opportunity, she will still... She will still pretty much, um... She will still go along with the government's... With the government's... Um... With the, with the government's deal, but it's like... I, I get the... I'm getting more of the feeling from this chapter that... Yeah, York herself is kind of just wanting to be left left alone to her devices, kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> now, York's line about adding crime upon crime will only make it harder to get along with the elders definitely again raises an alarm bell in Mars's head. And while I don't think she's going to betray them, it does sound like something is going to cause this partnership to crumble. Which, in, again, in my opinion, adds more to the idea of Vegapunk's message still being released into the world regardless of what happens like there's some gonna be some final final thing that kind of causes that to happen because they wouldn't have because it, at the at the point where where everything gets where all of the government story laundry gets released they wouldn't really have any use for york at that point if you think about it like york york's whole thing is the whole deal from my understanding is that york's whole thing is is, is, is she gets to become their the, the the new government scientist if she, if she if she goes along and helps them but if all all the government started laundry is released into the public then there's no point for her for, for, there's no point for, for, for that deal to exist anymore so yeah but okay let's talk about the mashups we got at the end of this chapter though which is Nostro confronting Frankie and Bonnie while Saint Garcia confronts Usopp Nami and Chopper and Chopper and 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 Chopper and in the latter's case He's like Saint Garcia is definitely making another go at capturing Robin, but let's let's start with with the Nostro setup because I'm not gonna lie, 
I'm a little bit torn on this one because the, the thought of Frankie fighting this Juro is a fun idea, it, but at the same time, like everyone has basically has basically talked about with Nostro, it's not real, real, not the matchup we want to see him see see with in terms of a fight either. Like we're waiting for Zoro to get up off his ass wherever the fuck he is and go toe to toe with toe to toe, blade for blade with against Nostro, because it's just the perfect measuring stick for Zoro to see how far he's come since basically defeating King and Wano, and if he's grown strong enough to really face off against the true power of the world government. Now. <clears throat> So yeah, in that sense, it's like if 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 Frankie does go up against Nostro, it's really just going to be an appetizer for 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 for, for, for basically the, the, the from main course main course fight we want to see. Now, the Saint Garcia setup is kind of interesting in the sense where it's basically going to be all the straw hats against him. But the only problem I do see with this potential fight is that Brooke is there, and like don't get me wrong, I love Brooke. But with him there, it feels like he's he might overshadow everyone else again. And that Usopp, Chopper, and Nami are really just gonna get their aren't really gonna get their room to shine. That, that's my biggest worry with this fight, which granted, I'm I, I don't know which granted. I'm pretty sure against Jay Garcia, like Chopper Chopper Usopp and Chopper Usopp and Nami are are pretty much not, not gonna even be able to contribute much to the fight anyway, but it, it just feels like another situation where where, where, where those three are going to fall to the wayside, and it's like, what, 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 why the fuck are they even there then? Like, it's, it's that kind of thing where I, I want to see a little more from from both Chopper and Chopper and Nami in this fight, but I don't know if we're going to get that. And, yeah, honestly, I'm actually starting to feel a little sympathetic, sympathetic for, for Jew Peter after this chapter, as it feels like he's the one elder in this whole situation who's just here to get knocked around and get treated like a joke. Especially with how Luffy just rams a broken building down his throat in this chapter. Like, that that in itself is like, okay, you are just a giant-ass punchline, aren't you? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but that, that, that's kind of the only way I can, I, I can kind of get a feel for it. Um, speaking about Luffy, though, yeah, this chapter also confirms just how important, like, Nika like the Nika form is when it comes to matching matching up toe to toe against the five elders because after Luffy runs out of steam with gear five, he attempts to fight like I think it's Warkiri in gear two only to get severely burned just from touching the skin of, of his of his like hog like of his like hog form so, of his of his boar form. So yeah, this emphasizes the point that Nika is a requirement to beat them, or Luffy needs to strengthen up his arsenal in his other forms. Otherwise, he's not gonna be able to. He's not gonna be able to beat them, and he needs to do all of this. And he needs to think of, of, of the strategy and, and find a way to, to find a way to work around this, all all on the fly. Because right now the clock's ticking, and there's no and there's no second chances or, or no or no room for mistakes right now. They if if the five elders escape, like he's he's got to do like. Right now, Luffy's got to do something to fix this, this disadvantage he has. Otherwise, yeah, it's it's more or less over. But, uh, yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Analyst Crunch Roll, be sure to hit the bell, hit the subscribe button, and just hit the video run, guys. Dark Knight Remain, signing off. Later, everyone.